markets tomorrow and a few others as well, which will be closely tracked. More on that later. Jay Bala of CashTheChaos.com is with us uh, with some uh, thoughts on the market. Jay, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, which is going to come first? I mean, you were saying we, we are in a big resistance zone. You're waiting for the market to tell you that it wants to reverse. Uh, and uh, there are supports at 17,800, 17,550. Uh, almost equidistant from new highs and the supports that you're mentioning. Which will come first in your opinion? Will we make a dash to the new high before we see uh, anything else? Yeah, uh, good to be here, Prashant. Uh, the probability that the markets are going to take out the record highs is uh, uh, quite low compared to the probability that the markets are going to break the 16.228 low, uh, 16.828 low that may registered in, in, in March. So, you know, I would think the markets are, uh, you know, very close to a reversal and uh, I would, uh, the probability of market going to record highs, uh, you know, skewed much lower compared to markets going much lower. Okay. All right, Jay. So if we pull back, what level do we pull back to? And also the Nifty Bank. Now, that's been a star performer. How are you seeing that one shaping up? Because buy on dip has really worked out out there. Levels you're tracking. Yeah. The bull bear divide for the Nifty Bank index is 41,900. Uh, as long as, you know, the index stays above that, uh, you know, you can consider the, the short-term trend to be up. Um, but SBI has come to a very critical uh, juncture. We're just waiting for a reversal to come through. There is some, uh, uh, you know, weakness visible in private banking space. Axis ICICI. Now, Axis is showing some amount of weakness. Uh, we need a, we need a breakdown to come through. But uh, we, despite the weakness, ICICI is slowing down, but not yet shown uh, uh, any any sign of reversal. But it is clearly slowing down. But the key is going to be SBI. If SBI had to trade below uh, 560, 557 then there is a probability that, uh, you know, that's going to lead the uh, um, um, a down move for the banking sector. But as long as 41,900 is maintained, um, we don't consider the uh, banking sector negatively yet. Okay, um, that's on the banking sector. Uh, what about Reliance? Jay, hi, Sirvi here afternoon. Uh, what about Reliance? I mean, I was just noticing that along with the rest of the market, it's managed to creep up. I mean, 2200 somewhere in early March. Now we're looking at 2400 plus. Uh, does it inspire any confidence? See, uh, the long term, the very long term picture for Reliance is, um, you know, it, it's, it's probably done a, a complete cycle from 1998. You know, it's too long to discuss at this point. But I'll say from the short term point, uh, you know, if 2290 is maintained, uh, uh, 2020 20 to 2290 is maintained, I think it's okay. But to me, the bounce from the re recent low in March looks like a corrective rally. So it's not going to leave the markets much higher. What about uh, IT? Many believe that uh, the IT index per se made a near-term low on the day of Infosys numbers. And since that level, the Nifty IT index is up 7%. Uh, your view on Nifty IT and any individual constituents? Yeah, as you recall from our last week interaction, I had mentioned that there are a couple of uh, high-risk uh, buys. You know, I, I believe Wipro came with uh, a miss on the numbers. I don't track, uh, you know, financials, uh, any company's financials. Um, but, but apparently, despite the miss, the stock is going up. And uh, so it is, the, uh, some of the IT stocks are seeing a relief rally. I, I'll treat this as an oversold bounce and nothing beyond that. Um, the real test comes at about 29,000 for the Nifty IT index. So, you know, uh, treat this as a oversold bounce and, you know, maintain stops and book profits along the way. Um, I, I mean, I, if you could recall, you know, for several months now, I've been bullish on the mid-cap space and I've said that it'll be the frontline uh, heavyweights that's going to drag the Nifty IT lower. But, uh, you know, that's exactly what's happening. So nothing big that's happening there, but uh, an oversold bounce. Mm. Okay, uh, capital goods is one area that you like, right, uh, Jay? Yeah, that's right. You know, uh, as long as uh, you know, Larson is trending up. Uh, I pointed this out last week too. Uh, the index is uh, doing pretty okay. You know, thirty six five hundred was my projection uh, from last week, but it's doing a little bit better than that. But I think uh, it's continued to remain a little bit bullish here, but only for the short term. But the next leg, uh, continuing forward, is going to be a little bit more choppy. Uh, probably come back to 35,000 on the capital goods index and then go back to uh, fresh record highs. And that will probably be the uh, ultimate top. But that's just a working thesis at the moment. We want market to endorse that. Okay. Uh, so, Jay, we've spoken uh, quite a bit about some of the domestic trends. What about global trends? 
anything interesting that you're noticing there, whether it's on the, the equity side or, uh, you know, um, equity indices, maybe commodities, rates, anything that catches your eye? The U.S., Europe? Oh, definitely. Uh, so, be the, the most important thing is to uh, keep your eyes on the uh, uh, U.S. banking index and the European banking index. Both uh, are set to decline quite sharply. I know I don't think we have seen the last of uh, what's happening in the U.S. Uh, you know uh, what we've seen uh, J.P. Morgan taking over uh, FRC. Um, you know, if you look at the uh, M2 money supply, um, it's at uh, you know it's uh, contracting at, at a pace not seen for the last 70 to 100 years. And uh, the last time uh, uh, M2 money supply was negative, like now, the M2 money supply on a year-on-year change is 4.05%, uh, negative 4.05%. It was not seen during uh, the, the financial crisis of 2008. Uh, it was not seen during the dot-com bust. So, you know, there's something uh, very, very uh, unique is happening. And, you know, I, I look, I mean, I, I, I reached out to a few people who've been in the markets much longer than me, and they tell me that there have been four instances when this has happened. That was in 1932, uh, 1920, 19, 18, uh, uh, 1878, and uh, 1893. So all these four, were, uh, <laughs> coincidentally, were depression years. So you know, I'm not I'm not projecting anything, but this is just a data point here. And so you know, um, uh, the 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 uh, US banking index the. Uh, um, KBW banking index is likely to go towards the COVID lows, which is a mild bearish scenario. The bigger bearish scenario is going to be, it's going to retrace closer to the 2008 lows. Okay, this index is the regional bank index, right, Jay? Not the big banks index. Not the, oh. that's KRE. Regional bank is KRE. Uh, I'm, I'm KRE. talking about the KBW banking index. Okay, well, uh, which the, the, the big banking, KBW. the overall, okay, the benchmark. Yeah. Okay, banking index. All yeah. right. Uh, you're saying that should, uh, that eventually heads back to COVID lows. All right. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there, Jay. Thank you very much uh, for uh, joining us. Good speaking with you. And uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, Jay, overall, basically still uh, cautious, saying that the market's now in a very strong resistance kind of zone. And it's time for a reversal once again. He says the likelihood of the market making new highs, which is, I mean, right around the corner, according to him, still remains lo low. We'll take a break here. More on the other side. Coming up, three minutes to market close as well.